Welcome, Kushagar. How are you? I'm good, Ashish. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much. As upon the border, maybe we can talk English and Marathi mix. Uh, this is your topic is more towards uh, medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, okay. traditional medicine. So maybe people, non-Marathi people, should also know about your practice, your uh, sure. uh, skills, basically. Okay. Okay. So to begin with, please introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, where are you from, where do you stay in Australia, and we'll take it forward from there. Okay. So my name is uh, Dr. Kushagra Bendai. So I'm an Ayurvedic physician. um as well as optimist and public speaker and mentor so i live in uh, melbourne in tarnet and my clinic is in veribi suburb um basically i'm from pune in india okay so you are ayurved doctor isn't it correct so that's your primary uh, practice that's my primary practice business what we can say at this point okay so uh, in india everybody talks about ayurveda everybody knows what ayurveda is uh, yes how how is it different from india in australia how did you find difference yeah sure so it's been uh, 12 and 1/2 years for me uh, to be in australia my journey started in sydney uh, for 2 years and then i moved to melbourne uh i find out many amazing facts that most of the indians they feel that people over here they don't know ayurveda um which is a misconception even as being a ayurvedic doctor i thought that you, uh, in a beginning but uh, i uh, there is a rto course uh, so registered or org, uh, training organization course in australia called uh, uh, advanced diploma in ayurveda now um, there are many ayurvedic consultants uh, who study that and they actually practice it so they're not a doctor because that course is around 2 uh, years somewhere left and that actually motivate me to stay here in australia and actually explore more with the uh, ayurveda field etc okay. so people know it um, uh, maybe not that uh, popular as what in india it is but uh, whoever knows they very well follow it as well okay so now having a practice back in pune and yes. then i know you have also traveled uh, abroad not just australia germany and couple of other places can you please tell us uh, how it was in pune and then shift into some other countries uh yes yeah. so when um, so my uncle uh, dr yogesh benda he is a well known ayurvedic practitioner he um, is a ayurvedic oncologist and uh, he treats more than uh, he treated more than uh, 10000 cancer patients uh, he has a clinic in pune so that actually inspired and um, obviously uh, because ayurved was at uh, in family through him so i got admission for bams bachelor of ayurvedic medical sciences uh, then my journey started from there um, but still i wanted to do something different in ayurveda that was always my passion since beginning uh, and hence i came to australia to study mba actually so i wanted to do a post graduation but in a some different field so i can take the ayurveda in a global level um, in a proper way so that's why i studied mba over here uh, i was practicing back in pune uh, it was not that uh, uh many years obviously i did practice there for a couple of years uh internship another year uh and then i moved to australia for my mba after that as i said that i stayed here uh, to find out explore and to get the ayurveda uh, reach at the global level uh, later um 2017 i uh, started seeing a patient um, in malaysia so and uh, 2018 19 i did a frequent frequent visits to kuala lumpur uh, to treat the critical patients and as well as jakarta uh, so at this point i i got the patients uh, and i go and see them in india uh, jakarta kuala lumpur and melbourne i have my own clinic so that's a um, vast vast uh, market i think uh, i was surprised correct. when you said jakarta malaysia and all those things so uh, yes. when it comes to uh, treating people always now it's a common mentality right if i have something yes. 
or if I get cold, if I get flu, if I get anything, I first go to uh, allopathy. I go Correct. to the doctor. Okay. And yes. they say, oh, you know, take paracetamol or take this or take that. How does that shift to you? Or is it something Good. like, oh, now it's not working. And now I will go to uh, Kushagar because he has some different way of treating people. Yeah. So um, practicing in India is much different than practicing in Australia because uh, obviously the first point of contact for everybody over here is GP. Um, as they um, are covered under Medicare as well. So that is a more tendency and people go to them. Uh, most of the time they get treated over there. So they won't look for any other option. But um, I personally treat the patients who are um, uh, who have a chronic diseases, uh, who already struggled with the modern medicine and they're not getting the effect or they are so sick to have those medicines because it's repeatedly they have to take those now. So those kind of patients I uh, look into, that's my expertise and I like those patients as well. Uh, so that's, that's uh, my practice. And there are other, um, uh, as what I said, Ayurvedic consultants, which are the diploma holders in Australia. So they do uh, many therapeutical practices as well. So we, even as a doctor, we run these thera therapies, etc. But those people as well run the therapies. So they get the people for the well-being, holistic, uh, under that approach. And um, uh, it uh, depends doctor to doctor how they practice here in Melbourne or uh, I mean to, in Australia. Uh, some doctors, they uh, prefer more therapeutical practices. So they do lots of therapies. And the uh, audience to them is moreover who wants to stay healthy, uh, who wants to um, uh, have a good well-being, good lifestyle, etc. Uh, so they have the, those crowd and uh, people who does medicinal practice like me, uh, we have a crowd who are actually left over from the modern medicine. They're not happy with them uh, or their case is just gone out of that. Somebody wants to avoid a surgery for some reason. So those people come to us. So uh, whosoever people came to you, how was your success rate in that case? Because most of the times we come to Ayurveda at the last when everything is kind of, as you said, they are not, they are fed up with the medicine, they, are, they don't want to go into that one. From Correct. there, when they are already at the low point, how you are turning around the tables then? Yeah, so this is a very good question and uh, it is very, um, like I would like everybody to uh, look into uh, their own, um, uh, their self and listen to their inner voice as well for this kind of things. Uh, when uh, people actually tried something, most of the time, uh, one bad thing got labeled on Ayurveda is Ayurveda gives late results. It is not 110% correct because um, people come to us very late. They already uh, took that disease for a long, they already have that disease long time in their uh, body. Second thing, uh, they already may have a side effects of the drugs they took so we have double work now we have to cure them as well as we have to take the side effects off as well so it takes time uh, success rate over here uh, like success rate in my practice uh, i will say is quite good because um, i hardly advertise my all patients are referral uh, because if one patient get a result then he will send me other patient and I like those patients as well because they come completely trust. Uh, they have a complete trust and faith uh, in me and in Ayurveda. So I like those patients to treat as well. So there are some patients who drop as well due to financial reason, due to they don't like the Ayurvedic medicine's taste. Sometimes Ayurvedic medicine, we have to take it for a, um, for a period of time because it does not suppress the things rather it treats you so that's the reason we need to have those medicine for a month to six months one year some depends on the problem they have uh, so people lose interest uh, or they may feel the symptomatic relief and they just stop the treatment as well so th those kind of people are there but there are many people who get a good result they now stick to ayurveda even they have a normal cold or something they will call me they come to me rather than going and taking Panadol or uh, taking any other uh, drugs. See, normal uh, tendency is basically 
Yeah. Or normal problems is like, as you said, cough, cold, flu, yes. all these things, plus hangover, you know. Uh, obviously, you step into the pharmacy and you yes. look for your typical medicines, right? That's a common trend. Correct. Now, if I have hangover, I'll take something. If I have flu, cold, whatever. Now, if I have to uh, grab any Ayurved medicine, it's not yes. available in any pharmacy. So how do I go about buying that medicine? Okay, so um, I will answer this little bit in a different way uh, because when I came to Australia in 2008, um, the things were totally different that time. Uh, hardly there were any doctor, uh, medicines were, were not coming. Even at this point in today's date, uh, we cannot get all the range of uh, Ayurvedic medicines which are available back in India. Now, uh, over here, uh, we have a TGA, which is Therapeutic Goods Association. And Ayurvedic doctors are TGA exempted. So if you need Ayurvedic medicine, then you have to actually go through Ayurvedic doctor. So Ayurvedic doctor have to do a consultation. Um, uh, it may be a proper consultation or a short consultation. And then after that, we provide you the medicine. So most of the Ayurvedic doctor have these medicines. We cannot have a pharmacy uh, for Ayurvedic medicines over here because um, the rules of TGA is not actually compiling with those things yet. And there are many people we need. We need more Ayurvedic people. Then we can actually uh, start this kind of things. But there are some OTC product, which is over the counter products. Nowadays it is available like Trifala, Ashwagandha, Shatavari. They all are uh, Ayurvedic, uh, sorry, they all are Australian brands. So uh, most of the, most of the uh, people, uh, oh, we don't need to import Shatavari capsules, Ashwagandha capsules or Trifala capsules uh, from India. They all come, they all are made over here. Uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, there are few doctors as well now started Ayurvedic pharmacy as a pharmaceutical company. So they are trying to launch their own products, but the range is quite low at this point. And slowly we will see that going increasing in the next five years. Obviously it will start very slow and low and eventually it yeah. will grow definitely. Now my next question is about, let's say you talked about all the Shatavari, Kalp and all those. There are many things, right? Three for our children and yes. all that. Now, a lot of things are available in our house. Yes. Typical Indian food, if you look at, uh, everything is available, right? So day-to-day -day basis, what should we consume so that we can keep you away? Hmm. So this is very um, interesting and very demanding question for the today's uh, situation with this coronavirus, etc. Um, again, I would like to add a few things over here. Many people ask uh, me, do you have uh, medicine for cancer? Do you have medicine for uh, common cold? Do you have medicine for hay fever? Do you have medicine for XYZ? So the answer is no, ideally, because what I say that I have medicine for you, and this is what Ayurveda teaches. Ayurveda treat human. Ayurveda will treat human body rather than treating a cancer. If we treat cancer, cancer may get better. So we need to treat humans to get all those elements out from the body and etc. So uh, prevention. So Ayurveda first ever um, in the first chapter in Granthas, they say Swastasya Swastya Rakshanam means uh, and Aturasya Vajipari Mokshanam means that prevention uh, is the first thing. And after that, the curation. So cure, uh, cure. Yeah. So if somebody is healthy, we have to manage them to keep healthy. And if somebody has a problem, then we cure them. So uh, that's, that's the basic concept in Ayurveda. So we have lots of immunity based or lifestyle based um, solutions given in Ayurveda. Many people started doing it on their own level here and there. Uh, but same with the question as well, we have many kitchen medicines or we have this, that, and then what we should do. So when it comes to immunity or when it's come to building a body internally, it's not always necessary that you have to put something in your mouth or herbs. First thing, what I suggest everybody is exercise. 
doesn't matter what it is either you do yoga surya namaskar running jogging any exercise so exercise is very important to build immunity first thing because exercise will increase your digestive uh, digestive fire uh, agni in uh, ayurvedic ayurvedic language what we say it will help you to digest anything and then you don't need to worry about what should i eat or i have to stop this many things i am getting craving about sugar so all these things will automatically go away if you just have a one good habit so rather than taking off 10 bad habits about eating you just put a one good habit which is exercising so exercising is very important second thing as what you said that indian diet uh, if we just say that at this uh, point um, but uh, i will add one thing that uh, into it because um, now 10 years i am doing full time practice in australia now so i saw many many uh, patients from a different culture religion race um, and uh, um, it's good it's thank to australia because we are so multicultural here so i pretty much have to dig and find it out what they eat what is their cultural uh, food um, what's their lifestyle so i did study on many things and i come to a point that if we actually go back to our own cultural food it's always based on a health but it is based on a health for that particular region where we are we are coming from um so we can add herbs we need to add herbs into our life but it may not be for everybody like um in marathi what we say um, or hindi as well sab ghode 12 takke so it doesn't happen like that that one thing is going to help everybody that doesn't happen everybody it, has a different it won't body. be like that so people need to find out uh, what their digestive capacity is most of the time we blame the ingredients rather than our own digestive system we say that oh if i eat um, some food then i will get a problem no it's your digestive system which cannot digest it so we need to find it out how we can actually make it uh, better so exercise is very important then obviously there are many uh, herbs like turmeric is there uh, garlic is uh, on the side of more over medicinal use ginger is there so all these herbs cumin cinnamon um, uh, in marathi we say masala cha daba that is exactly. a very good uh, very very good um, kitchen medicine for us so all those things we should start and i am really um amazed after seeing that many gps over here actually advise people to go for the kitchen medicine go for the lifestyle changes um when someone goes uh, to them for a diabetes then they tell them that okay start losing your weight first so that was not a case back like maybe 5 10 years uh, before now actually modern medicinal people as well started looking into these things and they can see the result if we just change the lifestyle if we just change few things then uh, it's much better in every aspect because there are many many lifestyle disorders rather than actually a diseases so di- like diabetes blood pressure so all these things are um, even a cancer it's a lifestyle disorder it doesn't happen to you overnight it actually keep building up into your body for a several period and then it comes in a form so those things we can easily reverse so many times i said I, like uh, my uh, food habits are good you know i don't eat yes. i don't drink i don't smoke and still i got cancer how is it possible i have this yeah. lifestyle that lifestyle but how come i'm getting that kind of you know so mm-hmm. what's your general uh, view on this how do you uh, let the patients know that okay even if you don't have that but there is this what's the common factor in it Uh, so common factor because i get lots of patients like this and i i treat cancer over here as well um, and thanks to my uncle because i learned everything from him so um, uh, as what you said that many people say i don't have uh, all these bad habits but i got a cancer now as a statistical data from um, uh, uh, not we say modern medicine but just the statistical data at the moment shows that 11% cancer happens due to a direct cause like if you actually chew tobacco or cigarette or some some substance etc 89% cancer does not have a reason so it's a lifestyle problem now uh, so that's a huge number 89% is a huge number 
Now, what happens that cancer, basically, it's a cell mutation. Your cell has a program, like a software, and it does not work that way. And it goes in a different, some different part, like what we say in a computer, it got, we got a virus in a computer, and then it starts destroying everything. So uh, similarly, uh, we uh, have that kind of a problem in our body. And when the cell mutation start, it can even start with the normal food what you eat if you don't have a good capacity to digest it. So if you are not putting a good coding for your, uh, like a programmer is not a good, then that thing won't come out very good. So okay. ingredients may not matter. It's a matter of your digestive system. It's a matter of your blender what um, in, or, uh, or your agni, what we say, or your digestive fire. So we come on the same point again with the immunity. So if we have those things um, in a good, uh, like if we have a good capacity, uh, uh, sorry, I mean to say, if we have a good digestive fire, then we can digest anything. And then we don't need to worry about cancer, etc. Plus, um, there are a few things like sleep. Your sleep has to be really good. When we sleep, we should sound sleep. And many people don't know that nowadays. So uh, the small steps are like uh, doing a abhyanga or just uh, putting a sesame oil on your body and then have a hot water shower. So that helps a lot as well. So that will calm, your, calm you down. You may have a good sleep after that. So once you catch up a good sleep, then you can function very well. So sleep, um, food and exercise, they are really important at the moment in our life. Or they are always important in our life, I mean to say. Now, with the coronavirus thing which is going around, how Ayurveda can help us out? Hmm, it's, I think that this is uh, a very... Uh, um, because, see, we at this point, we really don't know what corona exactly it is. Um, you, um, there are many... Um, rumors about it there are many things going around it so we really don't know what exactly it is at this point but what I suggest everyone is that see we have 320 trillion viruses in our body this is modern medicine it says okay now if some virus is actually too much activated uh, we can't just go and kill them. What, as an Ayurvedic person, I will say that increase your immunity. Automatically, you will fight against it. Because corona cases as well, we see that if somebody got corona, then they should not get worried immediately. Because if you see the death rate, it's not that high. Um, so obviously, take it seriously. I'm not denying that fact over here. But what I'm saying that do not get afraid because of it because you can fight against corona first put that thing in the mind that yes i can actually fight against corona rather than just have a mindset that okay now i'm dead because uh, in ayurveda it says vishado roga vartana means if you keep thinking about it then automatically those things get um, more into your body or that things affect you more now, uh, on similar topic, but a bit different uh, disease or illness, I would say, is basically the depression. Um, yes. People have a lot of money. People have, uh, you know, a stressful life or not stressful life or whatever. But the common yes. factor nowadays, if you can see it, uh, is slightly feeling low depression, which has nothing to do with the immune system, right? So, yes. do you have any treatment which can actually fight uh, uh, depression. Sorry, I missed what uh, do you have any treatment for? To fight depression. Depression. Oh, yes, definitely. Just before that, I will just plug the charger because the battery is getting too low over here. Okay. And I don't want people to miss something because Okay, wow. Ashish. So, um, depression is very, um, there are many people in Australia and uh, statistically it's quite high in Australia at the moment. Um, depression is again a lifestyle problem.
depression is a lifestyle problem so for depression there are few things um, it's it's more over on the mental health and um, mental health ayurveda actually described a lots of thing on mental health so initially what we need we need to uh, look into a holistic approach again so mind body soul let's not talk about soul currently but even mind and body we need to in, uh, we need to nourish both of them so uh, we need to rejuvenate our body to rejuvenate a body uh, we uh, use either herbs um, even if we just if i just uh, mention a single herbs or the otc product then um, ashwagandha shatavari is really good on a stress free so if we actually combine ashwagandha and shatavari it works very good for the uh, stress relief activities then um, uh, we have uh, oil oil treatment so shirodhara is very important in that uh, abhyanga which is the full body massage is very important in that so those are the treatments which ayurveda will do it for um, initially for the depression and then we go on depending on how it is then the second thing is um, pranayam very very important because many people they don't talk to themselves we talk to many other people but we never ask ourselves what what i really want do i really need this or many questions so mental health so counseling comes very important over there we need to spend time with patient for more than hour or two uh, for each session and we actually get lots of history we find it out why it happened what was the reason and mostly when i treat uh, the depression cases successfully i find it out when i told uh, when i tell them to forgive someone in their life they have some problem and then i say that okay you just forgive that person and after that i see a fantastic results and it's just suddenly changed so that is very important part in everybody's life that yes we can have arguments we have many problems but if we actually forgive somebody then we have a peace of mind then our mind doesn't go over there and that can take us easily out from depression so that's very important and uh, yes there are many other factors but that goes patient to patient so um, but uh, forgiveness doing oil massage shirodhara um, even they can just do their own head massage with the coconut oil so um, that's quite good as well so all those factors are uh, good on depression so prashagra uh, i have asked you a few questions by which you actually yes. give away a lot of uh, good advices free of cost without any consulting charge thank you for that thank you now in the interest of time we just have about maybe 4 to 5 minutes left on this do you want to add yeah. anything at the end because i think uh, this topic is going to take maybe maybe 1 hour 2 hours or whatever but for now i just want to end it in 30 minutes time so yeah. just before we close the call do you want to add anything for all of you uh i will uh, like from this platform first of all i'll thank you to um initiate uh, to have a initiative of these things and uh, it's really good work because many people can actually um, hear lots of people what they are doing etc um with ayurveda i would suggest people that um um you can like if it's a indian background they can always talk back in home they can find out few ayurvedic doctors because um uh, nowadays the lifestyle is very uh, much a problem where we wait to have a problem and then we find a solution rat nobody is trying to find a solution before or nobody is trying to find a solution to avoid a problem so um, that is one part go and consult nearer ayurvedic doctors there are many ayurvedic doctors now in australia um as well uh, so they will get a, at least some idea um that how their lifestyle should be because nowadays diabetes blood pressure cancer they are going too much high australia is actually a number one in cancer currently in all over the world 34% australians have cancer wow. so that's a quite quite long a large number um i would like to say one thing over here uh, uh, to my indian audience especially as well that um, many times people say that i don't know that ayurveda is in australia that's because many people never actively try to find it out or you never actually uh, search for it you never thought that i should if i have a problem i will search ayurveda 
and then when they come to know from somebody then they say that oh i never knew that there is ayurveda but if we say tcm which is a traditional chinese medicine everybody knows because many many uh, not many it's every chinese um, community goes to tcm medicine you know traditional chinese medicine and i actually say uh, like indians like we sh- should support our own science and of obviously course. then it will go up it's and really good i'm not saying that is exactly uh, why i wanted to have this interview specifically in english because now i can post this video across all the platforms not just limited to marathi and there is lot more awareness to our ayurveda so that will grow as well that was the whole point of yeah it. good so uh, dr uh, kushagra thank you so much for your time today i would love no to have problem. another chat with you on different topic uh, related to ayurveda so more and more we can actually spread more and more we can get cure without harming our body thank you for your time no problem and i'll talk to you soon again thank you very much ashish cheers bye bye thank you bye